Hey everybody, and welcome to our daily devotional Grandfather's Box, where we're taking a little siesta from the box itself. We're walking through something called the Sermon on the Mount. Uh, as we've said before, this is Matthew 5, 6, and 7. It's like the nuts and bolts, the basics of what it looks like to realistically live the life of a believer in Christ. And, and as we've said, Matthew 5 seems to be Jesus giving us the outline of what it looks like to live in relationship with each other. And now we're into Matthew 6, where he's starting to talk about what it looks like to live into what we call spiritual disciplines, to do something with our faith, to live it out in an everyday sense. We talked about prayer yesterday a bit, about how your words are okay, whatever they are that there is no perfect formula, that the heart of the matter is really a matter of your heart. God just wants to hear from you. He wants to talk to you, to spend time with you. And in the same way, a conversation only works if it's two ways. And so by opening up the door for us talking to Him, we can actually create more sacred space for Him to talk back with us. Well, Jesus keeps going here in uh, Matthew 6, starting in verse 9. And this is actually where he gives us what we know as the Lord's Prayer. Uh, if you're familiar with this, it'll sound familiar, but this may sound a little different to you. Okay? It says in Matthew 6, verse 9, Jesus says, Pray like this, Our Father in heaven, may your name be kept holy. May your kingdom come soon. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today the food we need and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And don't let us yield to temptation, but rescue us from the evil one. Now I don't know about you, but like there's something in me that bothers me if I don't finish that, you know? For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever and amen. Um, but that last bit, that was actually added in um, by the ancient church a long time ago. Um, for thine is, for yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. And as we said the other day, that, that word amen we so often use, it's not like a signature at the bottom of a letter. It, it's Greek. It comes from the Greek word chemein, and it means let it be done. And so when we pray, some have said that in our humility and recognizing that God is the one who really has the power to do things, not us, that we're not coming to him with our Christmas list, our shopping list of wants, but that we come trying to seek his will, his guidance, uh, to keep ourselves centered on him, not make God our vending machine, that if I pray the right number of things, push the right buttons and do the right spiritual stuff, put in the right coins, that he'll give me whatever prize I want. Um, but there is also this sense of authority about it. I mean, there really is some power in the fact that you get to pray in the name of Jesus Christ. The ancient church added this in, but I don't think that there's a problem with that. That we pray in the name of Jesus Christ. I mean, it, it, it's kind of like this. It's like if you were to go deliver a message from a friend to somebody else, and, and that friend held a position of authority, the manager of a business, the president of an organization. And, and you would deliver that message and say, you know what, my friend wants me to relate to you. Well, what if that friend adopted you? What if that friend said, I want you to speak on my behalf. When, when, when they're talking to you, it's like they're talking to me. That's what it means to, to pray in Jesus' name. That is just as much a huge humility as it is a tremendous responsibility. But let's get into this itself, okay? Jesus says to begin by praying, Our Father who art in heaven. Right away, Jesus challenges us to begin our prayers by addressing God. And this is important because over cultures and times, there have been so many 
God, so many different theological uh, perspectives. So to just flat out own, you're the one I'm talking to, God. As a matter of fact, it's interesting because what we call the Lord's Prayer here is actually a combination of a whole bunch of different phrases from ancient Jewish prayers. This, this prayer may, may sound so familiar to most of us, but it actually was familiar to the original disciples as well. Because it's like these snapshot sentences, and these sentences actually come from different ancient Jewish prayers. So Jesus begins by saying, address him, and let him know what you think about him. Your name is holy. May your kingdom come soon. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. But we know the kingdom as the kingdom of God. And by saying, may your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, what we're saying is, God, I want what you want. I want you to be the one in charge. I need to know what you, you want to have happen here. Give us today the food we need. The old translation, give us this day our daily bread. And, and it's always been said that this isn't saying what you want. This is saying what you need. There's a difference between our wants and our needs, isn't there? But it is okay. It's okay to, to rely on God for our needs. As long as we're willing to put boots on the ground ourselves. You see, it's been said that God's strength picks up right where ours leaves off. The problem is that so many people, they don't even start putting in the effort and they expect God to do 100% and them do zero. Like we've said before, who's the master and who's the servant? It, it, that boat don't float, you know. It continues on, it says, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Which is really the challenging question here. We're so used to asking God to forgive us of our sins. But do we really forgive other people the way we ask God to forgive us? I mean, do I? Do you? Do we honestly do that? Because if not, when we pray it, are we, are we saying a lie? And don't let us yield to temptation, but rescue us from the evil one. In other words, we're saying, I can't do this alone. Look, I'm, I'm just not strong enough, God. I need you to have my back in this. That's what this really means. I, I mean, there's, there's something awesome about getting to pray these words, but it's an outline. It's, it's a template, if you will. It's basically saying, hey, God, I will recognize who you are. I will say, I want what you want in this world. Please let me know what it is. Help me out with my needs, and I can't do this alone. That's the outline Jesus gives us of prayer. So maybe today for you, maybe you can take a minute and just perhaps say this prayer to yourself. Maybe you can put it in your own words. I used to challenge youth to do this when I was a youth pastor, to put the Lord's Prayer into words you would typically use. Whatever it looks like for you, to find that personal sacred space that feels organic to your soul. I challenge you towards that today. Pray with me. Papa God, we thank you so much for your love. We thank you for having our backs. We thank you, God, that where our strength ends is exactly where yours picks up. I pray that you watch over my brothers and sisters who, who are out there watching this right now. And I ask, Lord, that as we continue to explore what it looks like to know you more, that you continue to speak something beautiful and clear into us. We ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen. I love you. Stay safe. God's peace. I'll see you tomorrow.